so much for joining today with Marilyn and Sarah. And as I was praying about our time together, God dropped a verse in my heart I want to encourage you with. And it's from Psalms 25, 15. And it says, My eyes are continually toward the Lord. He will pluck my feet from the net. Some of you are watching today and you're really struggling. You're just quagmired. You're stuck. It's like you're in quicksand and you can't get yourself out. God wants to encourage you that as you keep your eyes on God, God will lift you out of that pit, out of that trap, out of that quicksand and rescue you and set you free to run in the paths that God has designed for you. So hop on the phone, get on the website. God has good things for you and God wants you to keep your eyes fixed on God more than anything else. And mom, I'm so excited that we have a totally amazing guest, yes, Andrew Womack with us. Yay! Thanks, Sarah. So Thanks, happy Sarah. to have so you. So glad you're here. And Andrew, you have this book, How to Become a Water Walker. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And uh, in this, you talk about unbelief, because sometimes that's a struggle for people, unbelief. How do we get over unbelief? Well, there's different kinds of unbelief that come from different sources. Some unbelief comes from ignorance. Some comes from wrong teaching. But then there's just a natural unbelief of the unknown and, mm -hmm. and things that are out of the norm. And he asked them to get, uh, he told them, first of all, when they were in this storm, he came walking on the water. And one of the things that I love about this, it says he made as though he would have passed by them. Now, to me, that's really interesting because you know that the reason Jesus came out there on the water was because he wanted to save these people. They were in a crisis situation. But he just was like, he was on a stroll and he just appeared to them. You know, I don't know if he waved at them, but he, <laughs> he just would have passed by them and they had to cry out. And this is important because there's a lot of people that need God's intervention, but God's not going to force His deliverance upon you. You have to cry out. You have to put some kind of a demand on God in order to receive this. So when they saw Him, they cried out for fear and they said, it's a ghost. And here's what He said. He said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. You know, one of the things I thought about is if He really wanted to just take care of their fears, why didn't He just calm the storm, stop the storm and do everything? And then they wouldn't have been afraid. But see, he told them, first of all, you've got to be of good cheer mm -hmm. before the storm stops. In other words, that's faith. They've got to get out of unbelief. They've got to start seeing things differently and have a little faith in God. And then when Peter got out of the boat, he came down out of the boat. And that's a major point right there is you aren't ever going to walk on the water if you don't get out of the boat. And most people are afraid to leave the security of the boat, even if it's sinking, which doesn't make sense. But anyway, he got out of the boat, but then he saw the wind and the waves boisterous around him and he became afraid and he began to sink. Well, there's so much. I've, every one of these phrases says something to me. But you know, I've never seen anybody begin to sink in my life. You just either sink or you don't. But he didn't sink all at once. He began to sink. And this is true that your faith doesn't just leave you instantly. It, it's a process. It's a process to get into faith and it's a process to get out of faith. And if we would be conscious of the signs and recognize when we are beginning to start doubting, we could deal with it before we crash and burn. But he began to sink and the Lord lifted out his hand, picked him up and he says, why are you afraid? Why is it that you doubted? Hmm. And Again, the reason that we doubt comes from different sources, but in this case, it's because he took his eyes off of Jesus and he saw the wind and the waves boisterous around him. And this is what I think happens to us most of the time is that we start in some direction. If we run into a storm, if a problem happens, we take our attention away from the Lord, away from the word that he's given us. We start looking at the circumstances and that's how uh, unbelief comes. You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Well, unbelief comes by hearing things other than the Word. Right. And so uh, I gave this example about how that I was in need of money and my staff was telling me we're one day away. We've got to pay this big bill tomorrow. Well, it wasn't tomorrow yet, but they were m trying to get me to look at these other things instead of looking at what God said and it would have stopped me having faith in that situation. And this is what happens to us. We get in some situation, we get to looking at all the alternatives. What happens if this doesn't happen? That's how unbelief comes at us. So we've got to get so focused on the things of God that we take His Word 
and we don't consider anything else. I've got an entire teaching entitled uh, Hardness of Heart, and anyway, the, the premise of it is that whatever you consider, your heart becomes sensitive to or dominated by. Whatever you fail to consider, your heart becomes hardened to. And the problem is we are considering a lot of stuff besides what God told us. We're thinking on the negatives. We're thinking on what the potential failure is, and that's how unbelief comes at us. So we're going to have to stop considering all of these things that are contrary to what God's told us. You know, I just feel we have an audience out there watching us right now. They feel like they're beginning to sink. And, you know, you don't have your eyes on the Word. You don't really have your eyes on Jesus in a sense. And we'd like to be a prayer support to you. So please call us and just, now we're not going to counsel you because you're getting faith teaching right here. But we are going to put you on our hit list to pray for and to believe God. Now, let me tell you, all of us live edgy lives. You know, you think, oh, well, you're older. It's not so edgy. It's just as edgy now, maybe more edgy than ever before. But I'm also seeing miracles because we go from faith to faith. When I read this, I got so excited. I thought, God, there's some nations you've called me to. I haven't gotten in yet. I'm going. You told me that. You need to have these what can I say, faith helpers? So you need this book, How to Become a Water Walker. So call in, get it, get five or six, and let's help other people's faith. Let's don't help their unbelief. Let's pass this on. Amen? Another question I have it relates to Peter's the one in the boat, and there's other people in the boat with him. So for us, there are people around us in our lives that are in the boat with us and we're in a storm together, but not everybody got out of the boat. What do you do with those people around you? Well, first of all, if Peter would have thinking, would have taken a poll and says, how many believe this is what we ought to do? He'd have never gotten out of the boat. <laughs> so you can't let what other people around you are doing dictate to you or you'll never do anything. If you are going to believe God and step out, you are going to be lonely in that sense. There's not that many people. This is the reason I love being around people who have believed God. Because <laughs> yeah. you know what? There's not a lot of people that are stretching themselves. They're playing it too easy. So uh, when other people are around you, first of all, you can't let them dictate or dominate or hold you back. But if other people are around you criticizing, in love, you try and deal with that and counter it. But there are times that I've had to, to family members just tell them that, you know what, I'm going to do what God told me to do regardless and you're going to suffer persecution. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 says, All those who live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, mm -hmm. will suffer persecution. And if nobody is persecuting you, if you never run into the devil, it's because you're both headed the same direction. <laughs> if you turn around and start that's going awful. against that's the flow, oh, you right. are going to be criticized. So that's a good point, Sarah, that you bring up, that you can't let the people that are in the boat drowning criticize you for getting out and walking on the water. You got to do what God calls you to do. It's important. And sometimes I think we'd rather stay with the people more than be with Jesus. Absolutely. Because we're afraid and that, and it's going to take some discomfort, right? I mean, Peter made the uncomfortable decision, whereas those guys in the boat, they made the comfortable decision and they knew boating and all that. I had a woman who had cancer and it was terrible. She had these huge things on her body that were spurting blood. They sent her home to die. I prayed with her, and in two days, they had shrunk to the size of a quarter, and she was healed. So she went back to the doctor after they'd sent her home to die, and they put her on chemotherapy, and she nearly died. They did it as a precaution, and she had an allergic reaction and nearly died. So she came home, and I told her, I said, you know it's not your chemotherapy that healed you. It's God. I said, you don't need this. Quit this stuff. And anyway, she said... What would everybody think? Her family, the people in the boat, were saying that this is wisdom. You ought to use precaution. And I said, you had an adverse reaction to this chemotherapy. Don't do it. Anyway, she went back and took the next chemotherapy round and died from chemotherapy. And, you know, that may be an extreme example, but the same thing happens to lesser degrees that people know that God has called them to do something, but they let the people around them influence them and make their decisions and you can't do that. If you're going to be a water walker, 
you're going to have to get a word from God and stand on it if everybody you know rejects you. And it can be family. You know, sometimes family think you're crazy, you know. <laughs> but I like to be crazy faith because I read Hebrews 11 and I read this wonderful book, How to Become a Water Walker. You know, it would be good for you to call and just say, this is what I'm believing for in one sentence. Just call in, say, this is what is my risky faith. And maybe you're believing for a new house. Maybe you're believing for a car. Maybe you're believing for a mate. Maybe you're believing for a financial miracle. Maybe you're believing for a miracle healing and miracle health. You can have miracle health. And so this is a good time to get prayer and also a good time to get the book, How to Become a Water Worker. Walker. Walker. That's Walker, kind of a, not worker. It's kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> right. And so let me say this to you. I think sometimes we say, well, we can believe for a little miracle, but we're going to be going into this next segment on raising the dead. You say, oh, well, Jesus said it and said we're to do it. Mm. And so you say, well, did Andrew Womack ever raise the dead? It's in the book. So be sure you get five or six books, but be certain to watch this next segment because we're going to go into a higher level of faith. Maybe I could say higher risk. And always people will say to you, oh, Marilyn, you go out too far in faith. Really? I don't know if you could go too far. I think even the mistakes I could have been too risky. I learned from the mistakes. I mean, God is so economical. He just uses everything to make you win. So stay right there. Raising the dead, big miracles, they're for you. It wasn't just fate or luck that Peter walked on the water while the other apostles stayed on the boat. But why do some people experience miracles and others don't? For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you How to Become a Water Walker by author and Bible teacher, Andrew Womack. In this book, Andrew shares many of the faith lessons he has learned from God's Word about walking in the miraculous. We will also send you Marilyn's book, Wow Faith. Many of us wrestle with faith issues every day. However, faith is not complicated. God designed faith to be so simple a child can understand it. Learn how to return to the simple, childlike faith that always pleases God and opens the windows of heaven. If you want to see miracles in your life, you have to get out of the boat. These two books, along with our handy Faith Scripture card, will help you walk in the truth so you can have water walking faith too. Call or click to receive yours today. We are so excited to invite you on our next group trip. Oh my goodness, it's going to be over the top, thoroughly amazing, and we're going to Portugal and Switzerland. This is a trip opportunity of a lifetime and you don't want to miss it. Mom, tell us some of the things we're doing. Well, we get to have healing meetings in Switzerland. Hey, is that awesome? And there's a lot spiritually going on there, but Portugal is awesome. It's like God is just pouring out His Spirit and we get to go in and add to that outpouring. You must go with us. Bring friends, bring children, bring grandchildren, and let's see God move in Europe in a special way in Switzerland and Portugal through you. And you know, you can get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. You might be saying, I can't go, time, money, all this stuff. We want to pray for you that God would help you to go and open up all those doors. Come with us to Switzerland and Portugal today. Did you hear all that wonderful clapping? That's this faith-filled audience that are here, believing with our guest, Andrew Womack, with Sarah, with me, for your miracle. You know, I like this, that we have other people who join us. We have faith teams. There's a faith team here today. What are they here for? For you for Jesus to do a miracle in you. And Andrew, when I read your book and I saw how you raised the dead, that is just awesome. Would you share that? Well, I've seen a bunch of people raised from the dead. Okay. Uh, my son that was in the book, he was the fourth person I've seen raised from the dead, but we had just gotten back from an overseas trip. It was 4.15 in the morning and Jamie and I had gone to bed at two 
and we got a call and it was my oldest son Joshua and he said dad I'm sorry to tell you but Peter is dead so I asked him what happened and um, I said don't let anybody touch him till we get there so we had to get up and get dressed it was an hour's drive into Colorado Springs and this is back before we had cell phones so we weren't in touch with anything and you know this is exactly the same thing that I've got in this teaching from uh, Matthew chapter 14 about that when uh, Peter started walking on the water he took his eyes off of Jesus and began to see the wind and the waves and he was afraid because of that and he began to sing so every time you start heading towards a miracle Satan is going to try and divert your attention away from the Lord. And so uh, as we drove in, I started having the same thoughts that you would have had if you'd have heard that Sarah sure. would have died or something. I started thinking of uh, having thoughts of grief, sadness, and I just determined I didn't want them. And I don't believe you have to uh, operate that way. So I just started praising God out loud and saying, Father, I thank you. I don't care what happens that you did not kill my son I love you. I'm going to praise you and serve you regardless. And I know that you minister on praise and stuff. But when you start praising God, the Bible says mm -hmm. you abound on your most, you know, you build up yourself on faith when you speak in tongues. And I mean, my faith rose up. And the thing that really helped me was I had had two prophecies, one in Ireland and one in California from people that I'd never seen. They didn't know anything about me. And they both walked up and said, you have two boys. And they read their mail and they told me that the youngest one was going to do this and this and this. And both of these prophecies on opposite sides of the world both prophesied about my youngest son that he was going to do all of these things and they hadn't come to pass yet. And I, my lightning fast mind put all of this together that if these were prophecies from God, which I knew they were, he hadn't seen those things come to pass, he was going to have to come back to life. And I started laughing. And I started praising God, and I told Jamie, I said, this is going to be the greatest miracle we've ever seen. And she thought I'd lost my mind. <laughs> but when we got into town, my son Joshua came out, and he said, Dad, I don't know what happened, but five or ten minutes after I called you, Peter just sat up and started talking. He was in a morgue. He was on a slab in a cooler, stripped naked with a toe tag on. He had been dead for nearly five hours. And he just sat up and started talking. And we went in and saw him, and he was just totally coherent. He says, no brain damage. And we just looked at him, and, <laughs> no brain and damage. he goes, None, no more than before. <laughs> but anyway, it was just totally miraculous. And it's the exact same things that we're talking about in here that, see, Peter, if he would have got his eyes off of Jesus and on to circumstances, he would have sunk. He would have. And, it, and I would have sunk. And I wouldn't have seen my son raised from the dead. I've got a granddaughter that's 13 years old now who was born the year after this. I wouldn't have had the granddaughter. Our life would have been different if I hadn't have put my eyes on Jesus. Praise is one of the things that makes you focus on the Lord because you won't praise God if you're sitting here thinking about, oh, man, my son's dead. Look at all the terror. You, you quit praising. You quit praising if you're thinking on negative things. Praise forces you to put your attention on the Lord. It brought back the prophecies. God's word came back to me. And that's what caused our son to be raised from the dead. It'll work for anybody. It'll work for you. Are you listening? Are you watching? Are you receiving? I mean, don't sit there and think this just works for Andrew. This is the Bible. It works for you. And I'm telling you, his book, How to Become a Water Walker, will really help you to believe for the miracles that Jesus has your name on him. I believe there are miracles that before the foundation of the world, he put together for you, for me. So call us. Let us pray with you, not counsel, pray. And of course, I love this book. I'm going to go through it again because I want these truths to be manifest in my heart and through my life. And I know speaking them helps. So call in, get the book or books, get it for other people. Be a missionary. Pass it on to others. Faith can be passed on. Don't you agree? I totally agree. I totally agree. And I want to ask you this question. In uh, verse 31, Jesus says to Peter after he pulls him up and he's like, you know, he was gonna, about ready to sink. He was began sinking. Jesus stretched out his hand, takes him by the hand and says, 
you of little faith, why did you doubt? This kind of a stretch for me, because like this is a boat full of 11 people who never <laughs> got out in the first place, let alone walked on the water. And Jesus says to him, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? What? How do you deal with that? Because that's a little bit of a reprimand kind of. Well, but you know, again, what you just said is one of the problems that people have. They compare themselves with other people. Right. And see, there were 11 that didn't get out of the boat and compared to them. Peter was awesome. But compared to what God wanted him to be, right. he still took his eyes off of Jesus. And this is one of the things we've got to do is quit comparing ourselves with other people. The vast majority of people are in the boat that's drowning and they're sinking. And if you just want to be like everybody else, you're never going to be a water walker. You've got to get to where what has God told you to do? doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. And I tell you, this is one of the things. That getting around people who are faith people, uh, you mentioned this earlier, but you need to do that because most people are looking and kind of taking an average and thinking if I'm just average or a little bit above, I'm okay, but most people are not doing very good. You need to get around people that are full of faith that, that fire you up. I just had a guy at our minister's conference that, man, I was believing for $53 million to get my buildings finished. And everybody around me, they all go, oh yeah, we're believing with you, but you can tell in the tone of their voice like, are you crazy? And I got around this guy and he's believing for 59 million, and then he's believing for a network of satellites to cover the world that is six billion is where his faith is. And I got around him, and you know what? It made my problem seem like it's just real small. <laughs> and so you need to be careful who you associate with and who you hang around, because that's, that's true, sir. If you, if you look back at the boat, well, I'm doing better than them. How could he say this? <laughs> but he wasn't doing as good as God wanted him to. And I think sometimes we benchmark ourselves based around the people. Comparing yourselves Absolutely. is unwise, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of watching Jesus. Absolutely. Because ultimately that's our, that's our goal. That's our objective. That's who we want to be like is Christ. Instead of looking at the people that are in the boat drowning, you should have looked at the one who was walking on the water and kept your eyes on him. But we do look at other people. Yeah, yeah. And I like the way you bring out how to get rid of unbelief mm -hmm. and how it comes. And that's key for us because unbelief keeps you from the miracles. Isn't that true? Yes, ma'am. And so I really, you say, well, I love this program, but you'll love the book because the book will last longer than the program. That's why I like faith books. That's why I like to get around faith people. They're so edgy. I think, what? They're believing for 53 million? I'm not believing for that. Or they're believing for 6 billion? Are you kidding me? But what does it do? It pulls you. It provokes you. This book will provoke you, and you need to be sure you get it. Totally good. So when he, when he pulls him up, and it says here as well that the wind stopped. He got in the boat, and the wind stopped. What does that mean to us? Well, the wind was what stirred up all of those waves and called all the problems, and so I believe that's the devil. The devil's the one, you know, he may not be the one doing it directly, but he's the one that stirs up all this stuff and makes it happen. And man, you believe God and it'll stop the devil in your life. I really believe that. Well, and when Jesus got in the boat, immediately... They were at the other side. They were at the other side. So John God had six. an immediate miracle mm -hmm. in Jesus, letting Jesus in your boat, in your circumstances. I think that's so good. And you're watching today and... You may feel very discouraged about your marriage, about your children, about your health, about your finances, just about your circumstances. Folks, let's get our eyes on Jesus. He's bigger than any circumstance of any of you that are involved. And remember, the game is not over till you win. It wasn't just fate or luck that Peter walked on the water while the other apostles stayed on the boat. But why do some people experience miracles and others don't? For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you How to Become a Water Walker by author and Bible teacher Andrew Womack. In this book, Andrew shares many of the faith lessons he has learned from God's Word about walking in the miraculous. We will also send you Marilyn's book, Wow Faith. Many of us wrestle with faith issues every day. However, faith is not complicated. God designed faith to be so simple a child can understand it. Learn how to return to the simple, childlike faith that always pleases God. 
and opens the windows of heaven. If you want to see miracles in your life, you have to get out of the boat. These two books, along with our handy Faith Scripture card, will help you walk in the truth so you can have water walking faith too. Call or click to receive yours today. Phnom Penh, Cambodia has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Night care, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Night Care from Saving Moses. I have a gut feeling that many of you out there, oh, you feel like I'm sinking in the storm. I've got all these circumstances. They're all so bad. And I would like for Andrew Womack to pray for me. And that's what he's here for, to teach you the word and to pray that the manifestation comes forth in your life. Plus, we have a whole audience here. So we have a whole team of faith for you. So you know what I'd like for you to do? If you can, put your hand on the television set. And Andrew, would you pray for them? Absolutely. Father, I pray for all of these. We thank you so much for the word of God that encourages us and teaches us these things so that we can walk on water. So, Father, I pray for the people that today maybe have been stirred, that they've been playing it too safe. They're on the shore. I'm asking that you would just spur them on right now to get into the boat and head in the direction that you've called them to go. For those that are already there and they're in the storm and feel like they're drowning, Father, I believe right now that you are just granting hope unto them that, Father, faith has risen in their heart and that right now they are taking their attention away from the wind and the waves and that they're looking at you, that, Father, they are going to receive hope. And we say in the name of Jesus that we aren't going to sink. We are going to make it to the other side. Marilyn and Sarah and I agree. And, Father, we release our faith, your ability to them and believe that right now they are getting up and they are taking steps of faith that are going to transform their life. So we thank you for it, Father, and we agree and receive that this is happening in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I believe you have received. Amen. So put your hand on your heart. Take your hand off the television. Say, I believe I have received. I have received. The Bible says it. I believe it. Amen. 